So going into a bit more detail with wave characteristics, we can go in and take a look at another type of transverse wave. Maybe, maybe this is light as an example. Remember, light is a transverse wave. And I'm going to show you two different graphs. I'm going to try to sketch them. So here we go. I'm trying to draw a straight line. This is my axis. And what if I drew... Now, this doesn't just have to be light. It could be lots of other things, but mainly transverse waves can easily be drawn this way. So this could again be the, um, like the last example I used, water wave. But I think it's just fun to look at it in a different sense. So this time right here, this would be time measured in seconds. That would be on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, I would represent maybe the position. So that would be done in meters. Now what would happen then is, well, what, maybe it will help if I actually show you the two different graphs, sort of one on top of each other. So this could be another graph. This time I'm going to put, well, still position as the y-axis. So that's still in meters. But here, instead of time, I'm going to say displacement. That's going to be the sort of key thing here, different. Now, a lot of students fail to see that these are two separate graphs. So that's why I'm sort of, I'm doing this really explicitly to show the difference. So on these, both of them, I'm just going to show you a wavy graph. Now the graph itself doesn't really matter too much, but let's just say I draw some sort of uh, well, this, for example, is a sine curve, if you know your mathematics. So maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll draw one that looks a little bit different. Maybe I'll make one with wiggles a little bit faster. Or we could say it's, uh, well, we'll talk about these different words in a second here. But, you know, there's more of these oscillations in the same amount of, well, let's say in this case, distance. But over here, it's going to be time. Now, what happens when we put this time thing in it? Well, if we look at how high this thing goes, so this thing here, maybe this is water wave or even light. Let's say how high it goes up and down. We could actually call that, now this could be light. It could also be water, keep in mind. It could be any sort of transverse wave here. So this up and down and up and down and up and down, we could actually say that that it has a special word. And we call that the amplitude. So that's going to be this right here. So from the middle to the top, we actually call that the amplitude. Okay, and the amplitude is measured in meters. So maybe I'll just say that. So amplitude. Um, now, as far as which letters we use to denote amplitude, mostly we use a capital A. So maybe I'll say A equals amplitude and we measure it in meters. So I'll just sort of define these things as we go along. That could be this. So from the middle of the wave to the top. Because keep in mind, it's symmetric. It goes this high, whatever units of position this is. Maybe this is like one meter here. Well, it also goes down by one meter. So this is symmetric to this. In other words, if it goes up one meter, down here, it's at negative one meter. And then up one meter, or anything in the middle. So that would be the amplitude. Now we also have something we can measure, which is right here. That's this distance, let's say, from one crest to another crest. That distance from a peak to a peak. Keep in mind, though, you can do this a lot of different ways. But this right here, we're going to call this the period. And normally, we write the letter T here. So T is normally period. And we measure that in seconds. So what it tells you is this is the time it takes to get from one crest to another crest means if this wave is traveling, it's how long it takes from, let's say, when you're at a crest to when this particle goes back down and then back down again and then all the way back up again. It's how long it takes, you know, to repeat the motion. And if you've done this in mathematics, we call this periodic motion for this exact reason. This is the distance, you know, at which this whole thing repeats itself. Now keep in mind the period, however, is not just from a crest to a crest. What's kind of cool about it, it's also, let's say, from this point here, this leftmost point, uh, to here. It turns out that's also the period. I could have done a trough to a trough. It's also the same distance. This period here is going to be the same. The way I like to think of a period is um, no matter how you look at it, you know, you all use computers. You're watching this on a computer, in fact, or on your phone or on some other device. Um, but when you use a computer, let's say you want to cut and paste something. Well, imagine no matter what you did, if you take the period, if you're looking at just one period, it means if you copied that and then pasted it again, you would see the same image again. 
So for example, let's say one period could be from here, then down, and then back to here. And if I took from here to here, which is also the same length as here to here, so if I started here, and then I took this, and I just copied only this drawing right here, and if I sort of pasted it then, you notice if I paste it to the right, it would be the same thing. And I pasted it again, it would be the same thing. Or I could have done it from here to here, and I could paste that again. So poof. So the whole trick I think of with period is whatever you need to cut and paste in order to have this thing repeat itself. That's the period. There's lots of different ways of measuring it, but from a crest to a crest is easy, a trough to a trough is easy, or you can do whatever else you like as long as you're consistent. So that's the amplitude and period. Now what happens with this one if we graph instead of time on the x-axis, we have displacement. This is really important. So now we're measuring some sort of distance. So this could be an actual string, where the string, you know, is sort of, uh, you know, stretched out to the right. So this could tell you, you know, sort of your displacement from sort of, I don't know, where you're holding the string to where your other end of the string is. This is still the position up and down. So this is something in meters and also something in meters. Notice this is different than position time. This is position displacement. Well, this height here is still the amplitude. So that's still amplitude, nothing different there. But the thing that is different is this. This distance, let's say, from here to here. In other words, the period, so to speak, of one of these graphs, so maybe from left, from a crest to a crest, is no longer the period, because period is measured in seconds. I need some dimension that only has meters in it. And it turns out this is called, well, this is the length of the wave. This is how long the wave is. So we call that the wavelength. And, whoops, I probably shouldn't have done that in the same uh, color, just to be sort of consistent. What I should probably do is draw it maybe in a different color. Maybe I'll draw it in blue this time, just so we have sort of different, different things we're looking at here. This is actually called the wavelength. And the wavelength is written with this symbol, lambda. This is a Greek lambda here. So this equals the wavelength. And that is measured in meters. So I hope that shows you that sort of the, if we've got something with time on the x-axis and we measure sort of the length of the wave, that's called the period, the time it takes to go from one crest to another. Whereas if we have something with displacement, this same quantity, either from a crest to a crest or trough to trough or from here to here, they should all be the same things. That is called the wavelength because that's the actual length of the wave. So I think that is really, really important. With these things now, we can start talking a lot better about what happens with waves. So in the following videos, we can do lots of things with equations, all because now we understand these quantities.